Wolfgang Amadeus Mozart, caster class servant, musical prodigy, and filthy degenerate. But what's behind this depiction of him in Fate Grand Order? Why does Mozart have the skills that he does? Does his character personality in FGO have any connection to the real Mozart? And to round it off, what grade would I give his depiction when compared to his historical counterpart? Let's find out, shall we? First off, Mozart is a caster class servant, which in fate has become a place not just for those who have a talent for magic, but also a number of artists and inventors like Shakespeare, Hans, and Da Vinci. For Mozart, it is mentioned in game that he had an interest and connection to the magical, but chose to devote himself to music instead. It is also hinted in story during the Solomon singularity that, had he not chosen to pursue music, he might have gone down a different, darker path. Glad that didn't happen. Also, it is mentioned that he made use of magecraft while creating his music. Now, since magic doesn't exist in our real world, I'm just going to believe that they made this change in order to adapt Mozart to a world where magic does exist. Or maybe there is some real magic behind his music. I mean, Mozart is considered to be one of the greatest musicians to ever live. Maybe there is some secret ingredient that made it so. Perhaps there is some kind of magecraft in his music. It remains a mystery. Next up is his character design. It is clear here that the artist for Mozart decided to take a few liberties, since the real Mozart didn't quite dress like this. Now, he is noted as having had an interest in expensive clothes and being fashionable, but the clothes he is wearing in FGO aren't like any other depictions of Mozart I've seen. Even so, there's clearly some influence here from not just his historical appearance, but also that of his father Leopold, who was also a composer, was the one who first noticed his son's talents, played a major role during Mozart's early musical career, and, according to some accounts, was a bit overbearing and might have had a real negative effect upon Mozart's lack of maturity later in life. Other depictions of Mozart, however, appear to have him in more flashy outfits rather than the more modest clothes he wears in the paintings of him, so perhaps that is a further inspiration behind his FGO outfit. At the very least, even if his game design is more flashy than his real-life counterpart, it still has a similar sort of vibe to it, so it doesn't bug me too much. At the very least, it meshes well with Mozart's depiction as an eccentric composer with a possible connection to the divine or mystical. Another thing to note is that in his later ascension forms, Mozart finds himself joined by some bizarre creatures, with angelic wings, instruments, and no heads. It's a little screwed up, actually. But as for what it might mean, my guess is that it is a connection to the link between Mozart and the music he composed. Whether that be people connecting his work with angels, that he composed works meant to be played during church services, or that Mozart himself was a devout Catholic throughout his life. Perhaps a combination of all three. Moving on to his skill set, Mozart's first skill is protection of muse, fake. Now the muses were the nine minor Greek goddesses that were said to be behind the creative endeavors of humans through things like poetry, literature, and yes, music. In other words, this skill is meant to symbolize Mozart's innate talent with music. As for why the skill is fake, I'm less sure about that. But my guess is that rather than Mozart's talent being the product of the divine or through magic, it is something he developed himself, that his talent is his own and not because some mystical being gave it to him. But he has the skill regardless because people think his works are so good that there must be some kind of divine or magical inspiration behind them. Mozart's second skill, Angel's Tune, is seemingly, again, a reference to what I mentioned earlier, Mozart's connection with the divine and his own dedication to the Catholic faith. In other words, further reinforcement of what you see in his character design in his third ascension form. Lastly, Mozart's third skill, Eine kleine Nachtmusik, which translates to a little night music in German, is one of Mozart's many musical pieces that he created throughout his life. This particular one was created in 1787, but would not actually be released until 1827, well after Mozart's death. It has since become one of his most popular compositions, to the point that I, a complete idiot when it comes to music, immediately recognized it once I gave it a listen. Perhaps you do as well. Mozart's noble phantasm is Requiem for Death, which, like his third skill, is a reference to another musical work of his, Requiem. Now, Requiem would turn out to be the last of Mozart's works. Indeed, he was still writing it while on his deathbed, and wouldn't actually finish it himself. The piece was commissioned by a Count Franz von Volseg, meant to serve as a piece to play during the memorial service for the Count's wife, who had recently died. But since Mozart himself was dying while he was writing this piece, it is said that Mozart came to believe that this music wasn't just for the funeral of the wife of this count, but for his own impending death as well. At the very least, the music was meant to be played during a memorial service, and so was for the dead, or for death, I guess. Mozart's whole skill set is centered around his ability to support allies and harm enemies through buffs and debuffs, respectively. In other words, he uses his music to inspire his allies to greater feats, while also being able to demoralize foes with different pieces. 
This sounds quite fitting to me. Mozart obviously wasn't some great warrior like many other servants in FGO are, and so his actual combat ability is quite weak. But he can provide help to his allies through his music. I mean, armies have had marching bands and stuff for centuries, so perhaps there really is something to that. As for Mozart's craft essence, it is called Haydn Quartets, which is named after a collection of pieces Mozart made dedicated to fellow composer Joseph Haydn. Though information is sparse, it does seem like Mozart and Haydn were good friends, hence why Mozart would go out of his way to compose music specifically dedicated to Haydn. A neat touch, I would say. Moving on to Mozart's characterization in FGO, his talent for music is obviously the first thing that comes to mind. It is what he's known for, after all. What is also noticeable is his bizarre mix of saying that humans are filthy, but that he still likes them despite that. The real Mozart is noted as being something of a cheerful optimist, a workaholic constantly coming up with new pieces of music, and more than a little eccentric, as geniuses tend to be. The picture of Mozart I have found is that he had a strong affection for humanity, and he expressed that through his music. So for his FGO counterpart, this bit of his personality seems to check out. But Mozart is also depicted as a bit of a degenerate in FGO. Marie Antoinette is the main source of these sorts of remarks, who calls him human garbage, a pervert, and being a child about everything except music. But where does this come from? Do these sort of accusations have any basis in reality? While on the surface, Mozart is widely known as a brilliant musical mind who created pieces that are still very highly regarded to this day. But behind the scenes, in his private life, there was certainly some filth to be found there. Mozart was known for employing scatological humor, which can be found in the private letters he wrote to a cousin of his, Maria Anna Thecla Mozart, who he might also have had an affair with, among many others. He even composed at least one musical piece with some rather fun lyrics. I'm not going to say them out loud, but you can see the title of that piece here. Mozart seems to have some fixation on butts, and the things that come out of them. I guess that's what he was into. But it certainly is different from the tastes of the aristocratic or religious patrons that employed him throughout his life, and so such behaviors tended to be kept out of sight. That fun musical piece I mentioned earlier? That got scrubbed by the censors once it was released to the public after Mozart's death. But as a whole, Mozart seems to deserve the comments Marie throws his way of him being something of a filthy pervert. Speaking of Marie, I went over this in my video on her, but the two of them are depicted in game as childhood friends who were each other's first loves in life. Now while the exact details of their meeting are uncertain, it is very likely that Mozart and Marie Antoinette, then called Maria Antonia, did meet when they were both children at the Austrian court in Vienna, and might have even had that encounter where Mozart slipped on the floor, Maria helped him up, and Mozart proposed to her in response. Their connection is emphasized in game, but it does not appear as if Marie or Mozart ever met again after meeting his children in Vienna, and both of them will go on to marry and have relationships with others. Still, the first love in one's life tends to be remembered, so them running into each other again as servants and remembering that past connection, that's perfectly okay with me. But on another note, I can't help but notice how many Marias are in Mozart's life. Let's see, uh, his mother was named Anna Maria, his sister was named Maria Anna, the cousin he wrote dirty letters to and might have been having an affair with was Maria Anna Thecla, and then the first love of his life was Maria Antonia, or Marie Antoinette. And the woman he married? Do you know what her name was? Constance. Okay, so not another Maria, but four Marias is a lot, you know. Maybe the Mozart family just liked the name. As for his relationship with Antonio Salieri, well, I'm gonna hold off on that for now and save that for the video on Salieri specifically, since that is at the core of Salieri's FGO characterization. In my opinion, their relationship is more important to Salieri's character than it is to Mozart's, and so it is better to discuss that then rather than now. Now for the verdict. What grade would I give Mozart's depiction in FGO in terms of how well it lines up with his historical counterpart? Well, it's actually pretty good in most aspects. His entire character either lines up with or directly references things from the real person. Also, the fact that the developers dug beneath the surface to find out all about that scatological stuff Mozart seems to have been into tells me that they actually really did look into the real Mozart in trying to figure out how to portray him in FGO. The only real knock I have against Mozart's depiction is his design, but even that is only a minor nitpick. So for a final grade, I'm going to give him a B plus. Well done. Now if a B plus sounds too harsh to you, I'm not your high school teacher. I don't give A's out easily. I'm only going to give A's to the best of the best, so that when I do, you know that they earned it. C's are the average grade around here, not B's. So in my book, B's are actually pretty good. So congrats, Mozart. You passed. 
Thank you for watching. This is my first attempt at trying something new for my videos, comparing the servants of Fate Grand Order to their historical or mythical counterparts. Do you like this new format? Let me know in the comments down below. Until next time.